Welcome back to movementprofessional.com. So today I'm going to answer a question that was sent to me by one of my friends from high school and college. Uh, she's now turned CrossFitter and she was uh, asking me about neck pain uh, when doing heavy military or overhead pressing. Alright, so when we're talking about neck pain with overhead pressing, two things we want to look at. The head position, so making sure that we have a neutral head. So if we're looking at it from the side, we want to make sure that the back of the neck is nice and long and our chin is just kind of gently tucked into the throat. And then the other piece is we don't want the shoulder to elevate up and forward too much when we're coming forward. So that would create a little internal rotation in the shoulder and an elevation of the scapula. So we want to try to keep that at bay as much as possible. So two ways we do that. One, we got to make sure that we set up properly. So we're going to make sure that we're getting a nice wide grip. If our hands are too narrow, then our elbows have to be wider than our hands, which inevitably creates this internal rotation in the shoulder. So hands being narrow is going to cause this elevation in the shoulder. All right, and then when we go up, inevitably we're going to get more elevation with more internal rotation. And then the neck is, ends up just taking that stress. So the more our shoulders are up, the more we shrug, the more tension there is here. It also pitches the head forward more, which can create headaches by getting the upper cervical spine compressed. And then also just creating a lot of muscle tension in the upper trap and leave it rear it. So we need that down. And the way we do that is we're going to get nice and wide on the bar here. Drive an elbow up, drive an elbow up. So now I've created a little external rotation. All right, so the other thing we're thinking of is because we're trying to prevent this upward motion in the shoulder blades, we got to think down. So we want to think our feet are pushing down through the ground. We also want to think our rib cage is being pushed down. So as I grab onto the bar and I create this tension here, I'm also got my feet underneath me and I'm driving them through the ground, tightening my butt, pushing down, rib cage going down, and then I'm going to step back and I'm in my rack, I'm going to reset, screw the feet down through the ground, rib cage down, creating external rotation with the elbows. And then I'm going to get the head out of the way, chin tuck, press overhead. So when I'm at the top here, I don't want to keep going up overhead. I want to see if I can break the bar, armpits towards each other, and then trace it right down through the nose, getting a little bit more external rotation on the way down. Breath in, tuck the chin, get out of the way. Butt's tight, abs are really working to pull everything downward. And then when I pull the bar back down, I, I literally want to feel like I'm pulling with my lats and all the muscles that would do a chin up. All right, and then I'm gonna get back and re-rack it. All right, so there's gotta be this elbow in from the wrist position, constant kind of uh, gaze forward so the gaze isn't too far down or especially too far up. Because you're trying to press something up, there'll be a tendency to look up, which is just gonna make the neck arch and chin poke out. So you want the chin in, you want the elbows up and in so that the shoulders can stay down. And then when we get up overhead, we're going to have to really fight to try to get away from this and basically by trying to break the bar. And on the way down, we have an opportunity to create more tension in the muscles that drop the shoulder blades down like the lats by turning them on when we pull everything back down. The second piece of this is sometimes when you get heavy, you're going to have to use your bigger muscles like your upper trap, your levators a little bit to just get that weight overhead. And that's fine. So we want to know... I'm going to uh, acknowledge that and then say, like, what can we do to counterbalance that? So we're going to do some mobility work then for the upper trap, for the levator, and also for the pec minor, which might pull us forward here. So if we're going to get at the levator, what we're going to do is we're going to find the top of the shoulder blade. So there's a spine of the scapula right through here. So there's this bony ridge. We're going to go on top of that, and then we're going to just keep going up until we feel a tender spot that if we move our neck away from our hand, we'll feel like it almost pulls the neck down and creates more of a stretch. Once we find that spot, that's where we want to load the ball. And then we're going to bridge up, raise the arm overhead as if we were finishing in that overhead press. And then we could bridge up and down on it. And then actually just work the press. That's the best way to make change to your press is actually pretend you're working through a press while you got some pressure on that upper trap. You're going to be going through the upper trap and then getting into the levator. All right, so you always want to test afterwards and look at both sides, and it should be easier to keep this right shoulder down if you just worked on your right side. All right, and the other piece is going to be the pec minor, which is going to be feel the collarbone right underneath. You're going to feel this little fossa, this little hole, and we can get into there. That's where your coracoid process is. That's going to be the attachment. So if we go down and we're going to the first couple ribs here, right into the meat, you're going to go underneath the pec major to get to the pec minor. So we're going to lay on this bigger ball 
And again, try to press overhead, pull down, really making sure the shoulder is pulling down when you're bringing the elbow down, and then creating pressure into that chest as you go up. All right, you can do either for about two minutes, or if you're in a pinch, you can just do 20 reps. All right, and then always retest afterward. It should be a lot easier to keep the shoulder down and back. If you have any questions, hit me up at movementprofessional.com. Melissa, I hope that's helpful.